We're live on Hogs Vlog again, and I tell you what, a lot of surprises throughout this IPL with the underdogs standing up and winning games. And uh, also, I've got a bit of a biff about Ravinder Jadeja in this vlog. Let's find out what I've got to say about him after we get through this bumper. Roll bumper, please. Show. Right here, guys, just before we get to this first talking point, uh, Bill Gates, thanks very much for joining me again, mate. Hope the technology's going well. Tucker Garge, Rowdy Gamer, uh, Atul Baral, how are you going again, mate? You got stuck into me on Twitter the other day. I really like your comments there. Arun uh, Mozivaram. Vozzy, what's Mozzy Varman? Mozzy Varman, I'd say that. Aman Jan, uh, Rafan Iraqi. Uh, how are you going, guys? Ah, Kota, how are you going again? Right, Kolkata and Punjab last night. Look, uh, I just felt that the Punjab bowlers didn't do their job. They saw Kolkata just hitting that good length, attacking the stumps, not giving them any uh, any width. And then when the Punjab bowlers came out and bowled, they just gave too much width. And the big contest that I thought that Punjab or where Punjab lost the game was Shami against Morgan when Morgan came in. Why did he come around the wicket? Because what that's doing is coming into the arc of Morgan where he likes that leg side and he can hit with the ball coming in on that angle. If we've looked at the uh, most of, of the bowlers who've cramped him up for room this year, coming over the wicket, not giving him any room, attacking him in the chest, he hasn't been able to get away. And you don't give him any width uh, as well. So that's where the Punjab Kings lost the game last night. Yes, a bit slow with the power play with wickets in hand, but... The wicket was difficult, and the bowlers let them down last night. And I just want to bring up one quick point there. Shubs, can you bring up that uh, that map that I've got from last night? This is early on. This is when Pat Cummins is bowling in the second over. Now, Mavi has bowled a beautiful over the over before. He's attacked a good length, attacking the top of off stump, and he's on a fuller side. Uh, he's worked out very quickly that the batsmen are struggling to find their timing because the wicket was slow and it was low. And batsmen couldn't get under it and couldn't find that timing because they were hitting the ball low on the bat. Now, come back to me, please, Shubs. That, uh, oh, sorry. Go back to the – go back to um, – the, the picture there. Now, Pat Cummins came from the other end. We can look at the long boundary on the right of screen as we're facing it, the 70 metres out there. He had a deep man there bowling to Argawell. Now, why would you be bowling short on this wicket? Um, yes, you've got the longer boundary there, but full, it's keeping low. Argawell, yeah, he's not good on the back foot, but it's a slow pitch, and that's where Argawell can play a dominant back foot shot. Yes, he bowled a short ball, top edge, over the slips for six. So be it. But you don't bowl short on this particular wicket. Sometimes you've got to change your game, game plan. Pat Cummins, a very experienced player who hasn't been bowling economically in uh, the first 10 overs of this IPL, or hasn't been bowling his best, actually, didn't sum up the conditions. Now, this is what you've got to do as youngsters out there. When someone else is bowling and you're going to come on next, look out what the pitch is doing. Try and sum up what the batsman's doing. Try and get a read of everything before you go on and bowl so that you give yourself an opportunity to, do I have to change my game plan or can I stick to the original game plan that I had out in the middle? And Pat Cummins isn't doing that. Sorry, Pat, I love you, but uh, that's one thing that you've got to improve on in this tournament. So well done to Punjab Kings 11 last night. Uh, you lost again and you've disappointed me. So Kolkata Knight Riders, there we go. They're going up the, up the ladder. I nearly put myself in the uh, in the foot there, but Kolkata... Are we back? There we are. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. We've uh, just had a little bit of a technical fa failure there. All right, batsman sneaking. 
This is something that we've got to talk about very quickly. Okay, let's get some uh, little shots up here. Sunrisers Hyderabad the other night uh, were playing against the Delhi Capitals. This is the last over. Kane Williamson sneaking uh, before the bowler has let go of the ball. He's out of his crease. Then he's nearly run out the other end. Because he's snuck, he's just got home. If that ball has hit the stumps, he's just got home. Next slide, please, Shubs. Okay, this is such it, uh, or is it still Kane Williams? This is still Kane Williamson here. He's done it on two occasions at least on this last over. Have we got one more slide with such it, please, Shubs? Have you got that one up? Because such it's done it as well. You don't see such it on the left of screen here. We, uh, we've sort of missed him out, but such has just got to the other end of the crease because he's a foot out of the crease. Back to me, please, Shubs. Sorry, guys, we've had a bit of a technical problem when it came off there, but, um, now, we don't want the man cat, okay, because that will slow the game down and we don't want bowlers giving batsmen warnings. Uh, the game's already slow as it is with all the dew ball, uh, the dew on the balls and if it gets hit out of the cr uh, crowd, we've got to change balls. So there's so much time being wasted at the moment. So for me, the third umpire's got to stamp on this and give a five-run penalty for batsmen who are sneaking out of their crease. We can't allow this to happen in the final overs. It's just not on. So do you agree with me or not? I'll be putting one of those on my Instagram feed and we'll put it up here on the uh, YouTube as well. A bit of a question and answer with that. Five uh, run penalty for batsmen sneaking out of their ground. Okay, off to uh, Pritfi Shaw. Yeah, deep practice. One thing that I've really enjoyed about Pritfi Shaw this game, he has been dumped from the Indian team. He's lost his plot, uh, place there. He's working hard on his technique uh, to improve it, to tighten up. Now, I've got a couple of slides here to uh, show how he's improved. Now, this on the left of the screen, look at uh, how cramped for room he is with the left-handed bowler. That front arm is cramping him up and he's uh, tight and he's, he's just not playing with any freedom. But on the right of the screen, He's got a little bit more freedom with his hands. He's loosened up a bit. Now we'll go to the next slide. And th the reason why he's loosened up, let's just look out the positioning. On the right of screen, this is earlier on, he's already moving before the batsman, uh, bowlers let go of the ball. But on the left of screen, he's more balanced, he's more upright, and he's got a better view of the ball. And those arms and the, and the back lift are staying in a good position and that head's not moving. So that is why Pritfi Shaw has improved. So back to me, Shubs. These are the things with uh, with you guys as young cricketers going through. You have to work on little bits of your technique like this. And sometimes when you've just lost your timing like Pritfi Shaw has there, you've got to slow it down. You've got to have uh, slower, slower throwdowns. And then as you gradually get that timing, you quicken up the throwdowns and then you get back into the net. So Pritfi Shaw's been doing that. He's worked hard on it. It's only a small adjustment and he's got his timing back. So that's what I'm looking forward to tonight uh, when he plays again uh, tonight. And we'll get to that a little bit later. Jadeja, complete cricketer. He is definitely the best all-rounder in T20 cricket going around at the present moment. Yes, he got dropped early uh, the other day when he was batting. But the way he capitalised on that opportunity and took the game away from the opposition was just phenomenal. RCB did not have the answers. And Harsha Patel, everyone can get on the back of Harsha Patel with that over of 37 in the last, uh, that, that last over of his. But let's not forget what he did earlier on in that particular game. He brought RCB back into the game with some tight bowling and some good wickets. It was just at that end there, he felt the pressure, he just couldn't get or execute the skills that he wanted to do, and sometimes that happens, and Jadeja capitalised on it. And then, the big wicket of getting Glenn Maxwell out changed the whole perspective of the game, because Maxwell had another five overs against the Chennai Super Kings spin, and that was the matchup that was going to win and lose the game for RCB. So Jadeja, absolutely sensational, phenomenal. And don't forget about his fielding. Some of the runouts he's had with this IPL have been absolutely sensational. I am on the Jadeja bandwagon. He is the best all-rounder going around in T20 cricket or all white form uh, cricket uh, at the present stage. Okay, let's get to the quick teams. 
Gee whiz, we've had a little bit of a bumble. Sorry about that uh, little um, episode earlier. Uh, the camera just fell over. Uh, Delhi Capitals tonight. I'm going to have Rahani in the team, and I'm going to have to bring Norky uh, into this team. So um, I've dropped the West Indian Hepmeyer. The reason why you've got Norky in, if you watched the game last night, the fast bowlers bowling a fuller length out the stumps with uh, not much bounce. It was very tough for the opposition uh, batters. So they've got to get quality quicks in here. And that uh, pace attack of Khan, Norky, Rabada uh, are just going to be too good for the opposition of RCB tonight. And let's move over to the RCB team. I, and yes, you've got Ashwin gone, but uh, Ashwin's not such a big loss because you've still got Mishra, who's one of the leading t uh, wicket takers in the IPL as well. So that, that's a big loss, but not such a big loss for Delhi Capitals. Um, the Bangalore 11, uh, not too many changes in this one. If there's any, I'd keep Saini in there just because of the way that the wicket la played last night. If the wicket didn't play like that uh, last night, I would have had Saini out and I would have played another spinner. But for me, it's all about the pace bowling. Bowling on a good line and length tonight. Whoever executes uh, best out of the bowlers will win the game. And for me, it's Norky and Rabada as well as Khan against Maxwell and De Villiers in the middle overs. Uh, whoever wins that battle will win the game tonight, and I'm thinking it's going to be the Delhi Capitals. Anyway, let's get to the questions. Sorry about that, guys, earlier on. I'm just a little disappointed that the camera fell over, but um, so be it. Okay, I'm pretty sure there's going to be one about Gill somewhere along the line. Shubs, have we got the first question? Oh, my God. Uh, Shazwat Jar, how are you going, mate? It's uh, good to see you. Thanks very much for your little donation. Um, hi, sir, from Bihar. Namaste in Bihar. India A plus category includes Burma, Rowett, Virat, uh, gets seven core. Do you think Jadeja should be included in A plus category? Pandya or Jadeja? Uh, for me, I'd go Jadeja. I just think he uh, offers you so much across the board with both bat, ball, and uh, also in the field. He's a proven performer. Um, He's probably the most fittest Indian cricketer going around. He's worked hard. For me, Jadeja's got to be in your Category A um, uh, of, of contracts. Pandya, I'd, I'd put him down the list. Jadeja in there. So for me, Jadeja, Category A, definitely, just with his all-round ability. And he's really performed in Test cricket as well. He saved India's bacon there a number of times. Okay, next question, please, Shubs. Thanks very much for that donation, Shazwat. Uh, Shivan Ghul, how are you going? Uh, why didn't Prithvi Shaw uh, come in the super over? Is Ravi uh, Ravindra Dadeja the best 3D player in white ball cricket out this time? Uh, Ravi Jadeja is the best uh, 3D uh, player going around in uh, white ball cricket at the present moment. There's no doubt about that. Just uh, the way that he bats, the way that he bowls, um, I, and the way that he feels. He's just a proven, a proven performer. Uh, Prithvi Shaw, why didn't he bowl, uh, bat in that super over? I think they were looking at a matchup. They knew that they were going to go with Rashid Khan to bowl that super over. So I think they wanted to have uh, the, the best players against spin out in the middle uh, at that particular time. So that's probably why Prithvi Shaw uh, didn't come in in the super over. Uh, that's a good uh, observation there, Shivin Gol. I like that. Okay, next question, please. Uh, Shubs, can we get that up? Ah, Kota, how are you going, mate? Hello, Hoggy, how are you going, mate? And do you think Mumbai Indians can drop Cronell and keep Giant Yardov uh, on the less turning pitches away from Chennai? Cronell has looked out of form with both bat and ball so far. Actually, I haven't been impressed with the whole middle order of the Mumbai Indians at the moment. They've, uh, they've performed in uh, small patches, but they haven't been consistent enough. So I don't think you can just look out Cronell. Giant Yadav, um, not quite sure with the ball. Uh, th this is probably where the Mumbai Indians are going to have a few headaches moving forward. How are they going to set up that middle order um, uh, contingent? And what, what's the best practice? For me, I'll still stick with Cronell. Um, you've got to back him. 
you know, that's why Mumbai Indians have been so strong and so successful over the well over the whole of um, the IPL's history, is because they generally stick with their main eleven that they picked out the start, and they uh, generally back their core players. So for me, I think they'll give Cronell another couple of opportunities and back him uh, just because he's a proven performer. I don't think that's the one, that's one thing I like about the Mumbai Indians. They don't rush out to make uh, too many changes too quickly. They keep backing their players. So I don't think you'll see Cronell going out. And I don't think Giant Yard of uh, his bowling is up to it as well. That's a good uh, good observation but Cotter. And that's the thing. Can we go as you're going to the next question, um, Shubs? The better teams generally are the ones that uh, don't chop and change their teams under pressure when they've lost a couple of games. They sit back and just go, right, this is where we've made the mistakes. This is where we can improve slightly. And we're going to back you to be able to make those adjustments. And that's what that's why Mumbai Indians are so good. And that's probably why Rajasthan, I mean, uh, RCB have struggled is because they've, they've and KKR for that matter, uh, they chop and change their 11. They chop, chop and change their batting lineup just too often. And uh, it gets confusing for the players. And sometimes it unsettles the, uh, the game plan and matchups of the opposition teams as well. Next question, please, Shubs. Okay, Nitalan Aran. Uh, ask Coggy, usually team have their best batsman batting out three. Given that Coley is opening and doing well, who should bat out three for RCB? Uh, Nitalan, I totally agree with what you're saying here. Uh, you generally have your best batsman out three, but that's more so for 50 over cricket and test cricket. In T20 cricket, you've got to make a few adjustments. Now, with the way that RCB is set up, um, they've got Paddockle and Virat Kohli opening the batting, and they want to make the most of those power play overs. Then they want to utilise some of the lower order batting or some of the other batsmen that they've got in their squad that aren't that powerful to clear the fence consistently. So they're trying to um, utilise one of those particular players in the power play batting out three. If they come off, it makes it easier for Maxwell and AB de Villiers in the middle overs. If it doesn't, then... Maxwell and A.B. de Villiers have got to stand up under a little bit more pressure. And that's why those two particular players get paid the big bucks. So for me, in the RCB setup, I'm very happy with them chopping and changing or utilising uh, different number threes to give them a go, just to find someone who can find a little bit of consistency uh, in, a, in a little bit of space at the time. And if one of them comes off, that might win a game for RCB or not, but you've got to have um, you've got to protect Maxwell uh, in that power play. Get him in with the spinners uh, coming in those middle overs, and you've got to have AB De Villiers in the back end because he's their best uh, prodigy to take the game away in the final four overs. Then they've got the other big hitters to go around the likes of Maxwell and AB De Villiers if they're at the end. So for me, RCB have got a very good lineup with their uh, their uh, batting lineup. And I, I quite like the fact that they're trying to be inventive with their number three, but I can't disagree with you having your best batsman out number three, but it doesn't work for RCB this year. Good question, Nitalan. Uh, Ajinka Deshpande, how are you going? Do you think Punjab Kings are missing a trick uh, not playing Darwood Milan? Look, I think they're going to have to get rid of Paran at some stage. He didn't look that good against the uh, pace the other night. I think he's got a lot of weakness there. Milan is a more complete player. Um, yes, he doesn't have the strike rate of Paran, but if you don't have consistency with your batting, uh, that leaves big holes as well. Yeah, Paran can come out there and have two or three big innings, but if he's going to fail the the other eleven innings and not get not get you the twenties, the thirties, and the forties, well, it puts a lot of pressure on the rest of the team. So I think it might be about time that they do get Milan into that eleven at some stage, and that is a very good observation, Ajinka Dishpandi. I love it. All right, next question, please, Shubs. Thanks very much. Chenapa Raju, how are you going? Do you think more Australian cricketers like Maxwell Cummins will head home before IPL ends? Uh, Chenapa Raju, that is a very good question. For me, if I'm looking at it, I think um, I think some of the Australian players that don't have Australian contracts uh, will stay because they need the opportunities. I think... Um, 
the players that are playing in the 11, I think they'll still stay on. The players that have been sitting on the bench, uh, I think times will get a little bit tougher for them. And that negative mindset might um, might cause them to come home a little bit earlier as well. And it's not just the Australian players, it's the English players as well. Remember, those two countries get paid uh, pretty substantially from their home boards as well. So that really, that it's it's not a big loss in in the such if they if they go away or if they leave. But others who don't have those contracts uh, will stay. But in looking at that. Uh, there are tough times, and I think I'll look at the Rajasthan Royals team now where they've only got four overseas players to pick from. I think that's a, an actual bonus for Rajasthan Royals moving forward now because they haven't got any other options. The side is settled. The overseas players are settled. So you've, you've got a core group of players there that know that they're going to be playing for the rest of the tournament. So for me, Rajasthan Royals right now seem to be, even though they don't have the best team on paper, um, because of that consistency and because of a smaller group in that bio bubble, I think it might turn things around for them. And uh, that negative, that that negativity of players that aren't playing and getting frustrated being in the bubble system aren't there. So I just think that frees it up and, and makes it a little bit more of an enjoyable atmosphere. So. Uh, that, that, that's the scenario I'm looking at. But I don't think too many Australian players will uh, come home uh, from now. I think most of them that are coming home uh, have left the bubble now. But that's a that's a very good observation, Chinapa Raju. I like that. Uh, Austin Dakuna, who is the strongest team of IPL 2021 as of now? Um, I think it's Delhi Capitals and Chennai Super Kings, actually. Um, Chennai Super Kings are... The big improvers for me, I felt at the start of the season that um, they didn't have enough options, but the way that the wickets are playing at the moment and where they go now, I think those wickets are going to suit them. So um, they, they, they've been very lucky with the with the squad that they've got. They don't have any out-and-out out, uh, fast bowlers. It's swing bowlers as spinners. And with these wickets, it's, it's really suiting them. So Chennai Super Kings and Delhi Capitals for me are the powerhouses. Um, I, d I don't think Ashwin is going to be such a huge loss, loss for Delhi Capitals because they can uh, bring Mishra in with Axa Patel um, and both of those spinners are, are of high quality as well. Um, so th those two teams are the strongest for me. Is Jadeja the best all-rounder of the world? Uh, third time in this live that I've said it, he is the best all-rounder in the world going around and he's probably the complete all-rounder in all three forms of the game. So for me, he, he should be getting one of the high contracts for India right now. Um, do you think IPL 2021 should be p postponed due to the COVID-19? Uh, look, Austin, I don't think so. I think we need. Um, I think we need it to continue. Uh, we need something exciting and positive on the TV that uh, people can look forward to. And uh, for me, I, I think it's doing its job in in that regard. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to see. I, I don't want to see the IPL uh, pulled away. They've they've got uh, the security right. They've got a bio bubble uh, atmosphere uh, going. Uh, the players um, are athletes, and you know, with with the way that they've stringently looked at making sure that the bubbles are safe as possible, uh, they've left no stone unturned. So it's probably the safest environment that you could be in uh, in the world at the moment in those bio bubbles. So for me, I think they should keep it going. We need that positive attitude going forward as well. All right, um, but. Good point there, Austin. Um, Shabhanka, how are you going? Uh, problems with Shubman Gill at the moment. Okay, problems with Shubman Gill at the moment. Have you got those slides, please, Shubs? Um, now, we had this up. I was going to leave it to the, uh, to the next go. But just look how on the left, those arms are well away from the body. Uh, that was last night. And during the Australian series, look how close those hands are to the body. So basically, his backswing back has uh, got out of sync. He's uh, looking to be more aggressive. And sometimes when you're more aggressive, uh, you lose your shape with your, with your batting. 
So for me, I think he's got to look and look back at the way that uh, he was going in the Australian summer, look at what, what was making him successful and tighten up those hands. So, um, and you can also see that he's sort of overcommitted going forward too early as well uh, in, that, in that space. So he's moving around a bit too, too much and those arms are just too far away from the body. So he's lost his technique. Now, thanks very much for those questions, guys. I'm so sorry about uh, the camera falling over at the start of the uh, start of the show, but you can get stuck into me on that as well. Uh, but I love you all. Thanks so much for um, for following me. Let's call it the uh, Hoggy Tribe, eh? All right. You can follow me on Twitter at Brad Hog un- or oh, Brad underscore Hog, as well as Instagram on the same handle. Stay safe. Look after yourself. Let's enjoy tonight's game, Delhi Capitals versus the um, versus RCB. I think the Delhi Capitals are going to be too good. Thanks very much, guys.